Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Welcome, and God bless us. Welcome especially to the members of the Diocesan Festival Choir. It's wonderful to have you with us. It's a great act of generosity on your part to come and share the prayer with us. Welcome to everybody from parishes other than St. Joe's. It's good to have you here with us. It's very, very good to have you here with us. And welcome especially to the parishioners of St. Joe's. It's an extraordinary gift to be able to stand in this moment of story and song. We know that as Catholics, we root our faith in story and in song. From the moment that the Attorney General's report came out in late August, I've urged you in some ways overtly and other ways more subtly, please root your reaction in the story. I speak to you as your pastor who cares a whole lot about you and the way you navigate this difficult moment in church history, the way you navigate this moment that challenges your faith. And I urge you, root your reaction in the story. And choose the right story. We're greatly blessed that Anthony Roberts chose to share his story. Anthony Roberts, a parishioner known to many of you, who as of tonight will be known as that guy who shared his story. Anthony, who's been a CCD teacher here, Anthony the soldier, Anthony the poet, Anthony the dad, Anthony the husband, Anthony the little league coach, Anthony the survivor. And so what we'll hear tonight, because we don't have scripture for this, you see, but we have the story. And tragically, we have too many stories. And the right story for us to contemplate is the story of a survivor who still believes in Jesus Christ who still believes in God's love and who still believes in our church. That's the right story to contemplate. That's the inspired story. That's the one where God says, contemplate the inspiration and you will become inspired. The music opens up our hearts and our souls in its beautiful way as we take in the story, as the story leads us to pray, as the story and the music focus our prayer and renew our reliance on Jesus Christ, the way and the truth and the life. He alone is our hope. I want to share this piece of Anthony's story, the introduction, and then we'll move into those three moments of lament, healing, and hope. Lament, healing, and hope. The prayers that we pray tonight, the parts of his story, the rhythm of the Psalms, the background music in our lives. I have an odd request. that could only be probably made by 
a middle-aged, overeducated white man. I'm very sensitive about Anthony's story. I asked Anthony to think about rewriting part of it. And that was wrong. That was very wrong. Anthony and I came together in this church four years ago this month, and you'll hear that. But I want to be very, very clear. It was about God's grace in that moment. It had little to do with Father Hank. And if you need to say anything because you're good people and you're kind people, I'd ask you to wait. I'd ask you to wait. I'm just not ready to take it in. Be patient. This from Anthony. Good evening. I begin with an apology. I would prefer to be standing before you reading these words myself, but I am unable to do so. A family commitment I made a while ago takes precedence. I trust you will understand. Father Hank asked if, in light of the circumstances of this event, I would be willing to share my story. After prayer, discussion with my wife, and people close to me, I agreed to do so. I am certain that many of you hearing these words know me. And if you do not, you will know who I am at the conclusion of this reading. A survivor's words of lament. Lament is one of the words found most frequently in the Psalms. David, often after messing up yet again, petitions God in poetry and song, petitions for forgiveness, for healing, for hope. While I've achieved some success as a poet later in life, my story begins with Lament. My story begins with the belief that God, God had abandoned me. At the age of nine, I was abused by a priest. It took me 30 years to be able to say that sentence out loud, let alone to write it. At the age of nine, 
I was abused by a priest. This and a number of other traumas experienced when I was younger hurt me in ways I couldn't imagine nor understand. I was also not the only victim of the priest. There were others who suffered far worse than I did. And I ask that you pray for them. My lament from this was silent. My lament from this was expressed in other ways. I compartmentalized it. I put it away. I tried to ignore what had happened to me. Over time, this became less and less of an option. Finally, a few years ago, I could no longer keep it in. The memories came back, and for a while, I set out on a path of self-destruction. At age nine, I was abused by a priest. I believed God had abandoned me. I tried to ignore it. I set out on a path of self-destruction.
While I set out on a path of self-destruction, there was still some glimmer of faith inside of me. Some desire not to allow myself to sink into oblivion. Some love for myself and my family that convinced me all was not lost. On a Sunday night, right around this time of year, four years ago, I came to the 6 p.m. Mass. I don't know why I did. My car seemed to steer itself here. I know Father Hank is not comfortable with what follows, but if I am to tell this story, then it must be told completely. Father Hank, recently assigned here, said mass and after, saw me lingering around the front door. He asked three simple words. Are you okay? I said no. And then it all came out of me. Everything that had happened and everything I had done to try to numb the pain from it. My path to healing began that night. Within that week, Father Hank had contacted the diocese where I was abused and arrangements were made without issue to help me get the help I needed. It has, of course, not been all roses and rainbows in the years since then. Healing required confronting pain rather than avoiding it. But I have done so. I am still a work in progress, as we all are, but I am still here to continue that work. In life, there is hope. There was still some glimmer of faith, some desire not to allow myself to sink into oblivion. Some love for myself and my family Healing required confronting pain rather than avoiding it. I have done so.
in life, there is hope. My hope and my strength come from the place where I was abused, the church. That may sound strange to you, but understand that if it weren't for the church, if it weren't for Father Hank, if it weren't for you who were sitting here, I would not be here to write these words. The priest who abused me took a lot of things from me. He and those like him will not take my faith. My faith is my hope. My church is eternal and perfect. No matter the actions of the flawed people within it, it is eternal and perfect because of the actions of the good men and women within it. Like the priest who is standing there right now and likely beat red with embarrassment, who act in persona Christi. My hope is bigger than my lament. My hope is that you will pray tonight for those who were abused and their families. They continue to deal with the pain of abuse and loss. That you will even pray for the abusers. That God will temper his judgment with some mercy because they will certainly need it. That you pray for my family who have endured this with me and who have stood by me. That you will pray for the good priests and bishops who now carry a cross fashioned for them from the egregious sins of their brothers. They need your prayers and they need your support. They will be the ones who will rebuild the church after the scourge and cancer of this scandal is purged from our ranks. That you will pray that we all emerge from this stronger and more committed to our faith. My hope and my strength come from the same place where I was abused, the church. The priest who abused me took a lot of things from me. He and those like him will not take my faith. My faith is my hope. And my hope is bigger than my lament. Pray for those who were abused and for their families. Pray for the abusers. Pray for my family who has endured this with me and who have stood by me. Pray that we all emerge from this stronger and more committed to our faith.
Anthony's conclusion. I thank you for taking the time to hear my story. I do hope it is a story that has perhaps provided a perspective that you may not have known. We who were abused are among you. We don't ask for your pity. We don't ask for special treatment. We ask only that you stand beside us as we all do the work to help our church heal and to help our church move forward. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And God love you. Signed, Anthony Roberts. Husband. Father. Soldier. Poet. Teacher. Catholic. Sinner. Survivor. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of the Way, St. Joseph, all of our patron saints. To root our reactions in the right story, the inspired story. The story that is a story of realistic hope. It's not a naive hope. It's not a fairy tale hope. It's this man's realistic hope. A survivor's hope for himself and for so many others. Everyone in this church is probably only a step or two removed from someone who has been abused, not necessarily by a priest, but by someone. And every survivor deserves to have that realistic story of hope. To our parishioners in particular, I ask you to really invoke wisdom as you respond to this calamity. Knowing that we as a church over the last 2,000 years have been to the bottom of the barrel. We have had self-imposed catastrophes. And God never fails. God has always rescued us. God will rescue us. And God will rescue us through the work of men and women who welcome God's wisdom. That is, the ability to make the inspired choice in the heat of the battle, including this battle. Whatever your reaction, I just ask you to check in. Is it rooted in wisdom? Is it rooted in stories of inspired hope? And 
does it trust completely that Good Friday led to Easter Sunday?
victims of sexual abuse, especially for those who've been abused by clergy that they wanted to trust, that all victims of sexual abuse may find their way to healing and to hope, that all these people may take that first all-important step, that they can say to themselves in God's presence, for once and for all, it wasn't my fault. That they can be patient with themselves, patient with God, and full of hope. We pray to the Lord. abusers, for all those who've been at that second level of agony because of pain inflicted on a loved one or pain inflicted by a loved one, for their healing and for their peace, we pray to the Lord. they truly will be open to God's promptings, that they'll be courageous and willing to do and say the scary thing, that they'll be faith-filled, knowing that the Holy Spirit is with them, that they will be confident that Jesus Christ will have the last word in this, and that all of those wise women and men who show us the way forward receive all the support we can give them. We pray to the Lord. According to Anthony's request, we pray for the abusers themselves, for their true deep down conversion, that they'll have an inspired sense of regret, that they'll desire true repentance. We pray for all those who are helping them to get to that point of conversion. We pray for law enforcement. We pray for the journalists. We pray for the psychologists. We pray for all the people who help us find the way forward. We pray for all the people here tonight. We pray for all who make beautiful music that opens our hearts to God. We pray for all the people here tonight who've been touched in some way by abuse, directly or indirectly, and for their peace. We pray especially for our parish, that as a community of priests and prophets and kings, we may remain forever a member of Christ, be instruments of peace, make the choices that lead all people to peace and glorify God and for the intentions of everyone here tonight and their safe travel. For all the leaders of the church, especially Bishop Cecchio and, Saint F and Pope Francis, we pray to the Lord. In the words 
God. We thank you for bringing us together. We thank you for the hope that comes from the healing that follows the lament. Lord, we ask you to guide us on our way. Give us wisdom. Give wisdom to all who lead us forward, who can help assure that this will happen never again, and that those who've been hurt may find healing. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lead your hearts in the pathways of peace. May the Lord grant you great courage, great wisdom. May the Lord make you instruments of healing and instruments of hope. May the Lord renew your faith so that your faith and your hope always remain bigger than your lament. And may the blessing of Almighty God descend upon you and remain with you always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please join me in thanking the, uh, the choir tonight. Thank you, Tom and Tony, especially. Thank you, uh, Bill Stroudman and Mary Beth, for reading. And thank you to everybody who put the church together. Thanks to our instrumentalists as well. And uh, thank you for all the people who came to pray tonight. Um, thank you. It's good to be in your presence as we face this thing together and as we celebrate our faith, realizing there's so much more to our faith than this, but we don't go around it, we go through it, right? Just as Anthony said, we don't go around it. Would you please join me in saying, concluding tonight with uh, one prayer for Anthony, and that is, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, Our Lady of the Way, and St. Anthony. Great, great thanks, especially to all the singers and to uh, Tom, my friend, the musician, and Tony, my friend, the organizer, the liturgist, and all of that good stuff. You've been terrific, and you made our church a holier place. Thank you very, very much for being here. <laughs>